Hey everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art. And today's assignment or our instruction today will be Peacock. What does that mean? It is the five ways of dimension and how to create dimension in your artwork. And so these letters right here all are one way of showing dimension, how to make your painting look like it's three dimensional, like you can go right, walk right into it. And we're gonna start out with the first letter, P. So what is the first letter? P is perspective. And there's two, actually, there's two kinds of perspective. One is linear, which is right here. This is linear. And that is the part where you have the vanishing point and the horizon line and the uh, lines going to the vanishing point and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's linear perspective. And then I like to call this aerial perspective. I like to call it atmospheric perspective. So what that is, is the atmosphere engulfs the mountains back here. These mountains are all probably the same color, right? They're probably this red, red, right? But why is it that way back here, they're almost gray, you know? And so that's atmosphere is engulfing that area way in a distance and that gives you a dimension, meaning that you go from front to back, right? This is, makes it look like it's the foreground. This makes it look like the background. This looks at the foreground, that looks at the background. And so that's P in the peacock. And so again, we call it peacock because that's just the way you're remembering it. And so the first letter is P. The second letter is E, which is edges. So edges is a way of making things look forward and backwards. And soft edges, just take a look at this chart right here. Take a look at this little graph right here. Which one of these looks like it's farther back? This one, of course, right? Doesn't it look like it's farther back than this one? They're the same sh um, shape, same size, but this one has a soft edge to it. There are soft edges, and for some reason, doesn't it look like it's farther back than this one right here, which is the front? Which it isn't. That they're all in the same. They're all in the same plane, but because I put edges that are soft on this one, it makes it look like it's farther back. So soft and hard edges make things go back and forward. And so the next one will be C which is contrast. So contrast meaning the contrast, the light and dark of something. So here again, I can show you this. This is a very high contrast, right? We have black against white. Here we have black against white in the opposite direction. So I just wanted to see, like this is on white paper and this is black paper. So the contrast right here, doesn't it look like these two are farthest forward? And which one is the farthest back? Of course, these have low contrast. And so this one, the contrast is very small between the white and the light gray. And even when you do that, the contrast may be so limited right here, it also makes your edges look soft. So if you wanna create a, um, a soft looking edge, don't use as much contrast. Cause here the contrast, you can see how hard an edge it is. This is the same hard edge. This is the exact same hard edge as this. I didn't soften this edge, but it looks softer. Same thing with this one. It looks softer because the contrast is so limited to a very small contrast. High contrast will show the hard edges. And remember last last slide, it was edges and this is contrast. So even in the contrast, you can make an edge look soft. Even though it's not soft at all, it's about the contrast. Again, which one looks farthest back? The less contrast back here pulls way back. This black and white, or black and white, <laughs> is your high contrast. And that comes forward. Those things pop right forward. So that's why in your center of interest, a lot of times you have the highest contrast, the hardest edges, and that you bring it all forward into the viewer's vision in front, right? So that's the PEC, and the next is at E, right? So PE, no, PECO, O, and what do you think O is? O is for, no, here it is, here, for overlap. Overlap is the easiest of all the dimensions because you just take something and place it in front of something else. Here's my one hand in front of the other hand, in front of my face. So these are th three overlapping things, right? And so that's overlap. That shows what's behind something. And so if you think of it as a pop-up book. I've always thought of this way back when I was teaching in the beginning, is I actually wanted to make a pop-up book for this um, example that um, basically they think about what's in front, what's behind to give dimension to the book, right? When it pops up and then, so just take a look at these, these uh, examples. So here you have the front layer, the middle ground layer and the background layer. That's the same thing that you do in a painting. A lot of times you want to try to find things that are overlapping. And then you can also use contrast and color and all those other things to make the contrast even more. So here we have, if, we are, if they're all the same color, these are all the same color, but because we have one in front, one behind, it throws a shadow on there for one, but then it's just, it's overlapping. It's overlapping, that shows a dimension when you overlap 
one tree to another tree to another tree to the mountains to the sky so that's all dimension that's called overlap and the last but not least is color and it's now these are not in specific order it's not like the order matters it's um color could be the first thing you use in your way of making things look like you're coming forward and farther back so bright colors as you can see here the bright colors the red and the blue those are colors cursor here so oh, I, it's red so I couldn't see it <laughs> um, so here we have the um, bright light bright blue and bright red right and so if you look on the, against the black and then you gray them down as you go down and also the, um, the color is just more vibrant here and as you dull, dull it and make it gray look how it looks like it steps back right so this is a very little bit of red with a lot of the black and um, that sits back farther than this bright red and the same thing on the white and another thing i want to explain here too is look at this between the black and the white so if you have a black background and the contrast is or the vibrancy is so bright against the black dark look at how much more vibrant this red looks than, than, than this red this red is on a white and so the contrast plus plus the the contrast is not there and um as it is in the black and this red looks brighter than this red even though it's the exact same red because it's on a white it just doesn't look as vibrant as this one over here because you're going to contrast with that so very interesting um, things to think about and then again these are the five ways of showing dimension in your work now somebody asked me you know you have five different ways of putting this into your work right is it important that you use all those five peacocks the p-e-c-o-c Let's say you use perspective, edges, color, overlap, and um, color. You don't have to use all of them in your painting. Let's say, for instance, you're doing a, a sunset scene. So with a sunset scene, I'm telling you that bright red comes forward, right? I said uh, bright colors come forward. But in your photo, now in your photo and your painting, you want to make a sunset scene, right? And then you're looking at it and you're going, well, I have a red background because the sun is way back there. Well, that's why when you use the four other things. so. You won't be able to use color, the last C, you won't be able to use color, but you have everything else. You can use overlap. You can overlap something against that red. You can make the soft edges back there with the red. You can make hard edges in the foreground. You can make perspective, aerial perspective. Not so much aerial perspective because it's not engulfing it. And actually it is, but it's opposite, doing the opposite because the reds are bringing it eye forward. So you got to cover up and make soft edges on there. So you can use one of these things, two of these things, three of these things. It doesn't matter, but you're going to do one of them at least to make show dimension. And that's when you want dimension in your work. Let's say you don't want dimension and it's more of a graphic scene where it's very flat. Even if it's three inches, you can still get dimension. You know, if it's two inches, if it's if it's like a half an inch, but there's something in front of something else, you can make it look th three dimensional. But when you're doing a landscape scene, a lot of times it's miles and miles back. And so you need to remember these five ways of dimension. And again, like I said, if you don't want to mention and it's very graphic, then you don't have to use any of these, basically. <laughs> so you just do you do your lights and dark in your composition of your work. So that's Peacock. Those are the five ways of dimension. And remember it as Peacock. And then again, perspective, edges, contrast, overlap, and color. And so keep that in mind when you're looking at your photo and see if you have those things in there to create dimension in your work. All right, and so until this Thursday, which we're going to try to do some dimensional work on Thursday in my panel lungs. And so meet me there on Thursday at 6.30 Central Standard Time, and we will paint together at my panel lung. All right, and so remember Peacock and put dimension in your work. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.